Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, we're going to try, first of all, determine the potential difference between the two plates. Next, we're going to find out how much work it will take to push an electron from the positive side to the negative side. And then finally, when we let the electron go, what will be its velocity when it returns back to the positive side of that electric field? The electric field strength is given to us in terms of volts per meter, in this case it's 500 volts per meter directed to the right, and the distance between the plates is 5 meters. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the difference in potential. So for part A, VA, which will be at a higher potential than VB, minus VB is going to be equal to the strength of the electric field times the distance between the plates. So in this case, that's going to be equal to 500 volts per meter meter multiplied times 5 meters, the meter, the meter cancels, and that gives us 2,500 volts between the plates. Next, we're going to find the work done. So for part B, the work done is equal to the force times distance, and of course, the direction of the force and the direction of the displacement is in the same direction, so the angle between them is zero, the cosine of zero is one, so we don't have to worry about the cosine of theta, and the magnitude of the force is equal to, well, that would be the electric field strength times the charge times the displacement d. So in this case, that's 500 volts per meter. Multiply times the charge of a single electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, and then multiply that times d, and that would be equal to 5 meters. And let's see here. Okay, what is that equal to for that? We need a calculator. So we have uh, 2,500 times 1.6 e to the, uh, that would be 19 minus, that would be, ooh, let me see here, that didn't look quite right. 2,500 times 1.6 e to the 19 minus equals, and that's 4 times 10 to the minus 16. So that's 4 times 10 to the minus 16 joules. Now we also could have found the amount of work required to move an electron across in terms of electron volts because we know by definition an electron volt is the amount of work required to push an electron across the potential difference of one volt. Now in this case the potential difference is 2,500 volts so we could have also said that the work is equal to 2,500 electron volts. Finally, for part C, we have the voltage, or not the voltage, but the velocity when the electron returns to A. So now if we let the electron go, it will zip back across, and when it gets to the other side, what will be its speed? Well, that means that all the potential energy gained by the electron will then be converted back into kinetic energy. The kinetic energy at the end will be equal to the initial potential energy at the beginning, which is equal to... 4 times 10 to the minus 16 joules. So we can say that kinetic energy by definition is equal to 1 half mv squared, which means if we solve this for v, we get v is equal to the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the mass, which in this case will be the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy of 4 times 10 to the minus 16 joules all divided by the mass, so I guess we could put on the units, joules like this, divided by the mass, which is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, which is the mass of an electron. So let's figure out what that's equal to. So multiply times 2, divide by 9.11 e to the 31 minus, and then take the square root, which gives us 2.96. Yes, it is. So 2.96 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. Notice that's almost 1% the speed of light. So if you take an electron and you push it across a difference of 2,500 volts, and then you let go, that 2,500 volts is enough to push it back and have it attain a speed of almost 1% the speed of light by the time it gets to the other side. A lot of forces involved. The force of elect electrostatic is very, very strong with the obvious result of very high accelerations and very high velocities. And that's how it's done.